Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night and a great week. To begin a great relationship, know what you want. Know what the needs of your body are and what the needs of your mind are, what fits well with you. There are millions of men and women, and some will make a good match for you and others won't. The two of you only need to be like a key in a lock, a match that works. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 23, NASDAQ off 19, S&P's off 9, gold contract up $10.10, .10, trading at 1443 an ounce, silver up 16 cents, $16.59 an ounce. Both gold and silver caught the bid once again. Bottom line, they want higher price. Oil. Oil also caught a bid up $1.30, $58.17. The differential in oil, folks, and we will get the API numbers out of 430 this afternoon, is it doesn't have volume behind the move. So I, I don't expect this move is going to stay higher. Notes and bonds flat. You get the 10-year uh, down three ticks, 127.11. 30-year uh, up one at 154.26. King dollar. King dollar up 14 ticks, trading at 97810 uh, King dollar three days in a row, volume contracting in a, a huge way. I expect we're going to see on King dollars. King dollar is going to fail once again at the 97.715 mark. That was the high that it, we just took out. We're at 97.810. We did not get to uh, the, the continuous contract uh, high out here. And I will bring that up when I bring the rest of these charts up. The euro is trading at 111 to 1 US dollar. The yen is out here at 108.60. And the pound is at 121 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Okay, so uh, if we take a look at the uh, S&P futures, this is what you're looking at. Uh, we take a look at the futures first. Futures out here this morning. Uh, we're trading up at a price point of uh, 3027 uh, Trump come up with a tweet that, uh, bottom line, um, China is uh, basically taking us to the cleaners. Uh, that sent them down to 3001 Futures shook it off as the market opened. That was the low of the market at 9.30. As soon as we opened up, shook it off. It closed at 3,013. The ABC structure on the way up is 3,055. I do expect we're going to see this. And it looks like, uh, bottom line, I suspect before the end of this week. SPY. SPY is at $300.79. You got down to 299.49 today. It rejected it. Bottom line, S&P, the, the SPY, your price projection on the SPY is 303. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Gold contract out here. We are in the December contract right now, folks. Pretty amazing. We're in the December contract. Uh, so the next roll is going to get us into 2020. Pretty amazing. So this contract here, up $10, trading at 1443 uh, Bottom line, volume 248000 Not bad. We go over and we take a look at the continuous contract. What you're going to see is that we are finally up and over the six-year consolidation. Now, we, we have to do now, what, since you're over it, folks, the bottom line, now we got to get away from it. And getting away from it means that you get way over the 1428, because 1428 on the nose is the number. Right now, you're at 1431. You've got to remember something. Last week, we did get over, way over it at the 1454. Then it gave it up in price. What I'd like to see out here this week is that we actually close over it. I'd like to see this baby up somewhere about the 1438. We get that going, then... Guess what? Your probability goes up exponentially that this gold contract wants to run up into this 1794 level. So we're talking about big numbers. We go into the bond and note and bond market, okay? This is going to be pretty wild watching this baby shake out. What we do know is this, is that you look at the Fed fund futures rate, and we have 100% probability that we're going to get a rate cut tomorrow. Remember something, that the Fed started their meeting today, folks. They come out at 2 o'clock tomorrow with the Statement, 2.30 with the news conference. Uh, so that's 100%. The next meeting is going to be on September 18th. Right now, we're running at a 59% probability that you'll get a second rate, rate hike, a uh, rate cut, rather. Um, and, you know, we'll see where the rest, the rest of this uh, shakes out. What we do have inside the Federal Reserve, this is the first time that they cut rates in 11 years. Fast 11 years, right? Bottom line, it's first time in 11 years. And what I've found is that when the Federal Reserve turns, folks, they don't just turn uh, with one rate cut, whether you're going down or one rate hike when you're going up. Most of the time, you're going to get two or three, 
Then you get nothing, then a reverse happens again. So what I expect we're going to see out here is that uh, bottom line is going to be the first of a few rate, high, rate cuts coming into the future. King dollar. What do we have with king dollar? King dollar bottom line is that uh, just to have a, a tough time uh, getting any type of buyers up at this level. Right now you're up 19.6. You're at 97.815. And the number the, that we got over was the 97.715. I expect by the end of the week you're going to be under that number. If we go take a look at the continuous contract, what you're going to see inside the continuous contract is that DX1... There we go. Okay, so the continuous contract, the high in the continuous contract, I believe this is at 98. Yeah, 98 to 260. And thus far, we've made it to 97.960. So it's real possible that we won't even make it up to the highs that were generated out here inside the continuous contract. Uh, if we go to the euro, and you'll see that the euro decided not to jump off the cliff <coughs> last couple of days. Right now, the euro is at 111.55. Uh, the pound's still in trouble. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, that being said, th this is what you want to wrap your head around a little. The pound, you know, got to a low today of 112.119. Um, and if we go back six months ago, it was 134. That is a monster move, folks, inside the pound. If that was, uh, if we were trading in the pound, if, if that was the U.S. dollar, you got to remember something, that... Anything you'd be buying inside the country wouldn't be the end of the world, okay? But your know, wealth uh, basically got decimated uh, in a huge way uh, in the aspect of six months. If we actually go look at the pound in general, uh, you're going to see right from the Brexit deal, you're talking about 171 to 121. This is, that's about as intense as you can get. Uh, so picture this. What that specifically means is that you got 100. It used to be $171,000, okay, to basically buy the pound per U.S. dollars. Now it's only 121, so 50 grand, okay. Bottom line, picture if they're if they're coming over to the United States, you want to buy something. Bottom line, yeah, they're going to get 121 for their pound per dollar. They used to get 171. See how that works out? Uh, that is a that is a huge, huge haircut uh, of buying power. Recap out here, Dow Industrial's down 23, NASDAQ off 19, S&P's off 9.5, and, and let's see if we got Apple out yet. Apple, uh, not out yet. Uh, as soon as we come back, I suspect Apple, I believe Apple's coming out at 4.30. Coming right back.